Okay, in this video we're going to start talking about absorbing Markov chains. And to start talking about absorbing Markov chains, we're going to talk about absorbing states. So a state in a Markov chain is said to be an absorbing state if once the state is entered, it's impossible to leave. So I always thought about them as being like little black holes. Once you get trapped inside of there, um, ain't no way you're getting out. So, so similar to regular Markov chains, an absorbing Markov chain that we'll define at the end, uh, those have the property that the powers of the transition matrix, those approach a limiting matrix. So uh, those, the, a regular Markov chain and a, an absorbing Markov chain share that property. Okay, let's go back to this idea of an absorbing state. So two examples here. We're going to identify any absorbing states for these two transition matrices. So in the first one here, we've got our states A, B, C, A, B, C, uh, entries 1, 0, 0, 0, 0.3, 0, 0, 0, 0.2, and 0.8. And let's pick out the absorbing states. So notice if you start off in state A, according to this transition matrix, it says there's a 100% probability that you're going to stay in state A. Well, once you're in A, you're stuck in A. It says, therefore, that A in this case, is an absorbing state. Likewise, if you're in A, it says there's a 0% probability that you'll go to state B. There's also a 0% probability that you'll go to state C. Is B, is state B an absorbing state? Well, no, because it says there's a 0.3 probability that you may end up going to someplace different to state A. There's a 70% probability that you may go, you may stay in state B. And, well, there's a 0% probability you'll go to state C. But again, once you're in state B, it says you may end up in either A or B. So B is not an absorbing state. Same thing for state C. Well, there's a 0% probability that you'll go to state A. But there is at least, well, it says there is a 20% probability you'll actually leave and go to state B. So C, likewise, is not an absorbing state. Easy enough. Um, for our second example, same idea. Um, okay, so it says if you stay, if you start in state A, it says there's actually a 0% probability that you'll remain in state A. So A is not our, one of our little black holes here. Likewise, it says if you're in A, there's a 0% probability you'll go to B. There is a 100% probability that you'll go to C. But since you're not staying in the same state, we're going from A to C, A is not an absorbing state. Well, if we look at state B, okay, there's a zero probability you'll go to A. But if you are in state B, there's a 100% uh, probability that you'll stay in state B. Therefore, B is an absorbing state. Okay, um, and likewise for C, this is not going to be an absorbing state because if you're in C, it actually says you're going to leave. You're, there's a 100% probability that you're going to go to state A. So you're not staying in the same place. So C is not an absorbing state. Okay, so basically what you would be looking for for a matrix, if you have things, uh, you know, A, B, C, if you have the exact same order, A, B, C, and this is something we'll talk about, um, there's, you know, there, there's no reason we have to write A, B, C this way and A, B, C that way. We could certainly switch things up. Um, we'll talk about a standard form to help uh, avoid some confusion here in, the, in, in, a, in a video. But if things are labeled in the same order, A, B, C, A, B, C, basically you would be looking for ones along the diagonal. Right? If there are any ones along the diagonal, so here we've got a one on the diagonal, here we've got another one on the diagonal, in that case you would have absorbing states. Okay, but again, it depends on the labeling, so I want to stress that. Okay, a couple remarks here, and then uh, we're just going to make a definition of an absorbing Markov chain, and then we'll be finished, at least in this video. So, 
the presence of an absorbing state in a transition matrix, that does not guarantee that the powers of the matrix approach a limiting matrix. So just because you have an absorbing state, that doesn't mean you have to have a limiting matrix. Nor that the state matrices in the corresponding Markov chain approach a stationary matrix. So again, it's not enough it's not enough to have an absorbing state. You can't just say, oh, well, there's an absorbing state, therefore we've got this limiting matrix, or this stationary matrix. And to verify this, I'll let you do this on your own, if you look at the second matrix here, you know, if you start looking at powers of this, P, P squared, P cubed, P to the fourth, etc., you'll see that these, these uh, this transition matrix, if you start looking at powers, these will never approach a limiting matrix. You can actually see that if you start looking at powers of this matrix, it actually just starts oscillating back and forth. But again, it has to approach one specific unique matrix, and it's just not doing that. Okay. Well, I can hear you saying, when do we have these limiting matrices? Well, what we need is we need one extra condition. So for transition matrices for Markov chains with one or more absorbing states, so you need at least one absorbing state. For those to have limiting matrices, we need one extra condition. Okay, so this is, this is what's known as an absorbing Markov chain. So we say a Markov chain is an absorbing chain if there's at least one absorbing state, okay? And the extra condition is it has to be possible to go from each non-absorbing state to at least one absorbing state in a finite number of steps. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Well, let's actually look at an example of a couple transi transition matrices, and uh, we'll see we'll see if they uh, correspond to absorbing Markov chains or not. Okay, so we're going to look at recognizing some absorbing Markov chains. And we're going to do this using transition diagrams. So we're going to determine whether each matrix P is a transition matrix for an absorbing Markov chain. Okay, so I should label, I left those out, A, B, C. So let's look at our first, mat or first transition uh, matrix here. I'm going to make a diagram. So we've got state A here. We've got state B here, and we've got state C here. Notice if we're in state A, it says there's a 100% probability, or again, a value of 1, that we're going to stay in state A. So again, this is our absorbing state, so I'm going to shade it in. That's our absorbing state. Okay, and there's no probability, uh, there's zero probability that you'll go from A to either B or C. Okay, it says to go from B to A, it says there's a 0.2 probability. It says there's a 0.8 probability that if you're in B, you'll stay in state B. Likewise, there's a 0% probability that you'll go to state C. For state C, it says there's a 0 probability that you'll go to A. It says there's a 0.1 probability that you'll go to state B. And it says there's a 0.9 probability that you'll go to, that you'll remain in state C. Okay, so the way I always thought of these, okay, there's my absorbing state. We have it shaded in. If you kind of imagine that the arrows are sort of one-way streets, I always think would it be possible to go from the other two states following one-way streets to get to my absorbing state? Well, if you start in state B, you could certainly follow this street over and end up in state A. Likewise, if you're in state C, well, it says you could go to state B following my little arrow there. And then once you're in state B, again, you could follow that arrow over to get into state A. So it says we can go from each state to our absorbing state in a finite number of steps. So we would say, in this case, um, this is, yes, this is a transition matrix. for an absorbing Markov chain. Okay, 
let's look at our uh, second example here. And we actually just looked at this one a second ago, and I, um, we discussed it a little bit. So, so let's see. So if we're in state A, we've got state A, state B, and state C. Okay, so in this case, we decided that state B was our absorbing state, right? If you're in state B, it says there's a 100% probability that you're going to stay in state B. Well, okay, it says if you're, let's look at state A. It says there's no way you'll stay in A, there's, there's no way you'll go to B. But it says there's a 100% probability that we'll go to state C. We've already looked at state B. Likewise, if we're in state C, it says there's a 100% probability that we'll go to state A. And now we've got our transition diagram. So again, if you kind of think about it in terms of, you know, streets, is there any way, you know, for example, if you're in state A, can you follow these one-way streets and end up in state B? Well, no. It's, if you're in A, you're just going from C back to A to C back to A. Um, same thing for state C. So since we can't go from our non-absorbing states to our absorbing state, we would say no. Uh, this is not a transition matrix. This is not a transition matrix for an absorbing Markov chain. So again, that's how I always thought about it. Draw your little arrows. Um, as long as, you know, if, if notice, for example, in my first one, I didn't even bother to put an arrow from A to C because there's no probability that we'll go from A to C. So following that convention, if you think about as long as there's, in a sense, the probabilities are sort of irrelevant. Um, again, as long as you only put an arrow if there's some positive probability of going from one state to another. So then you can just follow the arrows and get to your absorbing states or not.